Greetings, Southport family. I'm Kim Gaddy. I'm the Executive Director of the Southport Environmental Alliance. And I want to inform you about the proposed zoning changes that will forever change the fabric of our neighborhoods in the South Ward. I need you to lift your voices and be heard. Contact our South Ward councilmen and our at-large members. Let them know that the proposed changes will add to the flooding in our neighborhoods, change two-family homes to four-family dwellings, decrease our green space, but more importantly, establish overcrowding in our neighborhoods with the ability to have a second house built behind the primary house. These changes will harm the residents in the South Ward and we're seeking environmental justice. Thank you. Hello, South Ward. This presentation is about the proposed South Ward changes in the Newark Zoning Replacement Ordinance that is expected to be considered by the Municipal Council this summer. You're going to be able to see all the resources that I describe in this presentation at this link right here. And because everyone in Newark lives in a zone, if you don't know what zone you live in, it's recommended to Google Newark Zoning Map and put in your address. So first off, what is zoning? Zoning law sets the fundamental rules for how property owners in the South Ward can use and build out their land. These rules are used by the planning and the zoning boards to approve or disapprove everything that gets built in the whole town. You can let your voice be heard on these critical issues by sending in a comment by Friday, June 16th at 5 p.m. And again, you can find all the info at this link. So let's take an overview and see what are the zones that exist in the South Ward, starting with Clinton Hill. First off, you're going to see a lot of these yellow type of zones, and orange too, where they have a code that starts with an R. That stands for residential, and these are areas where mainly people live. You're also going to see some red zones in here, and pink. Those have a code that starts with C, which stands for commercial, and those are your shopping areas. Areas. You're going to see some purple zones that start with an I. That stands for industrial, which are the manufacturing areas of the city. You'll also see some green zones that say park, like Mildred Helms right there, and some lighter blue and aqua zones that have MX in the beginning, which stands for mixed use. And if you look down in Weequayuk, you're going to see a similar collection of zones, a bunch of yellow zones that start with R for residential, some red and pink zones that start with C for commercial or shopping, some purple zones that start with I for industrial or manufacturing, some green zones like Weequayuk Park. In the middle of Weequayuk, you're going to see this blue block that says INST, that stands for institutional because that's where Beth Israel Hospital is at. Here in Dayton, you're gonna be able to see R zones, some mixed MX zones. You'll see a zone that says EWR, which stands for the airport zone, as well as some shopping up here along Freeland Heisen Avenue. So what we're gonna do now is go through each of these zones to talk about the proposed changes for how you can use buildings, and how you can design them. We'll start with what are called the R1 zones, which are the one family residential zones. Here in Clinton Hill, you'll see that that is a pretty big chunk, both south of Clinton Avenue and north. And then here in Weequayuk, you'll see a bunch of blocks just to the side of Weequayuk Park, as well as along the south end of the neighborhood below Chancellor Ave. Today, the definition of these zones is you can have one family residence per lot. Under the proposed changes, two families per lot, which could be two apartments in a main house, or a main house and a backyard or garage apartment. There's a number of other things that would be permitted for the first time, like commercial antennas and microwave dishes. In terms of design, today, a property owner is allowed to have one dwelling unit on the lot, and under the proposal, you'll, you'd have two apartments on the lot. Today, a property owner is required to have a 30-foot deep backyard. Under the proposal, the property owner would only have to give a 21-foot deep backyard if the overall lot is 70 feet deep. Today, a property owner can pave a maximum of 40% of the yard. Under the proposal, a property owner could pave up to 60% of a yard. Today, a property owner has to have at least a 50 foot wide lot to build a new house. And under the proposal, a property owner would have no minimum lot required for a new house. 
Next, we're gonna look at the R2 zones, which are called that because they're two family residential zones. You'll see that this is a lot of Upper Clinton Hill. Likewise, it's most of Weequay, and you can see it's a lot of Dayton as well, that R2 two-family zone. Today, under the current zoning law, a property owner can have two families living on a lot. Under the proposal, a property owner would be able to put four families on that lot, with three families in the main house and one family in the backyard or the garage. And once again, there's a lot of other uses that would be permitted for the first time. In terms of design, today you have a house with two families in it, and under the proposal, you'd have that same house plus a backyard apartment totaling four apartments on the lot. Today, on 2,500 square feet, a property owner is required to have a 30-foot deep backyard. Under the proposed changes, if your lot is only 70 feet deep, you would only be required to have a 21-foot deep backyard. Today, the maximum you're allowed to pave if you're a property owner is 45% of your yard. Under the proposal, property owners would be allowed to pave 65% of their yard. Now let's keep stepping to the R3 zones, or three family residential zones, where if you're a property owner, allowed to put three apartments on every lot. Here in Clinton Hill, you can see that most of Lower Clinton Hill is an R3, three family zone. Also along both sides of Hawthorne Avenue has a lot of R3 zones. If you look down in Weequay, you see a big chunk of the neighborhood from Dewey Street, over to Osborne Terrace, from 78 down to Lyons is all R3. You also have some R3 along Chancellor. And today, the law says that a property owner can put three apartments onto every lot in R3. Under the proposed changes, a property owner could put five living units per lot, with four apartments in the main building and one in the backyard or the garage. In addition, if a property owner owns 5,000 square feet on a corner in one of these R3 zones, they would be permitted to build a five-story, 60-foot tall apartment building with 20 apartments in it. So in terms of design, uh, you can see here at the top on 3,500 square feet, today a property owner is allowed to have three apartments. Uh, they're required to have a 30-foot deep backyard. They're required to pave a maximum of 65% of their yard and to have their building cover a maximum of 55% of their lot. Under the proposed changes, with that same 35 by 100 foot lot, you'd be able to have five apartments if you're the property owner, including a backyard unit. If your lot was only 70 feet deep, you'd be only required to have a 21 foot deep backyard. A property owner would be allowed to pave 70% of their yard and build over 55%. In addition, if you have 5,000 square feet, 50 by 100, on a corner, you'd be allowed to build, as a property owner, 20 apartments on the lot in a five-story building, and you'd be required to have only a 14-foot deep backyard. A property owner would be allowed to pave 80% of their yard and cover 75% of their land with a building. All right, the final R zone, residential zone, that we're gonna discuss is R4, which is the low rise multifamily district that allows apartment building. And what you'll see here in Clinton Hill is wherever there's orange, those types of apartment buildings are permitted. So that's mainly along Clinton, uh, a little bit along Chadwick, and when you get down to Weequayic, that's mainly along Chancellor Avenue and further south. There's a little bit you can see in Dayton as well. Now in these areas today, a property owner is allowed to put up a four-story, 48-foot tall apartment building, and under the proposed changes, property owners would be allowed to put up five-story, 60-foot tall apartment buildings along with commercial antennas, microwave dishes, and a lot of things we've already mentioned. In terms of design, if you had a lot that was 35 feet by 100 feet, that's 3,500 square feet, under the current zoning laws, you could build six apartments on that lot. Under the proposed changes, you could add eight additional apartments without a public notice or public hearing. Today, a property owner could build a four-story building that's 48 feet tall. Under the proposed changes, 
the property owner could build five story, 60 foot tall buildings. Under today's rules, property owners are required to have backyards that are 30 feet deep. Under the proposed changes, you would only be required as a property owner to provide a 14 foot deep backyard. Today, a property owner can cover two thirds, 66% of their land with their building. Under the proposed changes, they could cover 75% of their land with a building. Today, property owners are only allowed to pave 37.5% with concrete or asphalt. Under the proposed changes, property owners could pave 80%. Today, Property owners have to have at least 50% of the front of the building be devoted to windows. Under the proposed changes, they would only be required to have 35% of the front of the building dedicated to windows. So now we'll move on to the C zones. Again, C stands for commercial. So these are the shopping areas. And we're gonna start with the C1 zones, which are the small shopping areas usually a block or two in the middle of where people are living. So here in Upper Clinton Hill, you can see that there's a couple small areas of C1, small shopping along Clinton Avenue, also a couple uh, along Hawthorne Avenue. So these C1 zones include areas of Hawthorne, Chancellor, Irvin Turner, Bergen, Milford, Avon, Madison, and Clinton. And you can see that part of this proposal is to take these existing commercial one C1 zones and greatly expand them. So you go from this existing zoning map to this, and you can see all the additional C1 zones. So again, go from these C1 zones that exist today to what you see right here. Down in Weequayek, you'll see that there's some C1 zones along Lyons, and then another little area of this small shopping district, Chancellor and Leslie Street. And once again, you're going from today's C1 zones to proposing a lot more C1 zones, mostly on both sides of Bergen. This is the C1 zones that exist today. These are the C1 zones that are proposed. So what do these C1 zones mean in terms of what a property owner is allowed to do on that land? This is a list of all of the new things that property owners in C1 zones would be allowed to build or to convert existing buildings into being. So that includes five-story, 60-foot tall apartment buildings, homeless shelters, single-room occupancies, also known as boarding houses or rooming houses, animal cafes, animal daycares, bars, taverns, lounges, body art studios, breweries, cigar, tobacco, and vape stores, cigar and hookah bars, a whole bunch of other things. Again, you can download this whole presentation or take a closer look yourself. In terms of design in the C1, commercial one, small shopping areas, today, if you own a lot, that's 35 feet by 100 feet, that's 3,500 square feet, a property owner is allowed to build six apartments. Under the proposed changes, that property owner could build 23 apartments on the same lot which means adding 17 additional apartments without having to give public notice or have a public hearing. Today, property owners can have buildings up to four stories. Under the proposed changes, property owners could create buildings up to five stories. Today, a property owner has to provide a backyard that's at least 25 feet deep. Under the proposed changes, they would only be required to provide a 14 foot deep backyard. Today, a property owner's building can cover 80% of their land. Under the changes, that would go up to 90% of the land. Today, a property owner can only pave up to half of their yard. Under the changes, a property owner could pave up to 80% of their yard. Today, a property owner has to provide at least half of the front of their building as windows. Under the changes, they would only be required to provide 40%. All right, let's talk about another commercial zone that starts with C, which is a shopping area. These are the C2 zones. And these are generally your neighborhood shopping streets, like your main street of the neighborhood. So you'll see that under today's law, the C2 zones in Clinton Hill are mostly along Clinton Avenue. The proposed replacement ordinance looks to expand these C2 zones. So you can go from what you see right here in terms of these red areas to many, many more lots of land would be designated as C2 zones. And that's along Elizabeth and along Clinton Avenue. And if you look down here in Weequayek, you'll see 
the C2 commercial two neighborhoods, shopping main street zones to be mainly these areas along Lyons Avenue and then a little bit further south along Chancellor. So what do these zones mean in terms of how property owners can use their buildings? Under these proposed changes, there'd be many more things that property owners could use their buildings for in these C2 zones. That includes eight story, 96 foot tall apartment buildings, homeless shelters, hotels, boarding houses and rooming houses, animal daycare, bail bonds, bars, taverns and lounges, body art studios, breweries, cigar, tobacco, and vape stores, cigar and hookah bars. You'd be allowed to have dry cleaning that sometimes uses hazardous chemicals. You'd be allowed as a property owner to open a liquor store, a massage facility, a pet shop, and a bunch of other things. And again, you can download the presentation or take a closer look on your own. In terms of design, if you own a lot of land that is 35 feet by 100 feet, that's 3,500 square feet, today property owners are allowed to build 10 apartments on that land. Under these proposed changes, a property owner could have 23 apartments, which could mean adding up to 13 more apartments in an existing building without a public notice or a public hearing. Today, property owners can put up buildings up to five stories or 60 feet, under the proposed changes, they could put up buildings up to eight stories or 96 feet. Today, property owners are required to provide a backyard of at least 25 feet deep. Under the proposed changes, if their lot is only 70 feet deep, their backyard would only need to be 14 feet deep. Today, a property owner can cover 80% of their land with a building. Under the changes, they'd be able to cover 90% of their land with a building. Today, a property owner can put paving down on only up to half, 50% of their yards. Under the changes, they'd be able to pave up to 80% of their yards. Today, the front of a building has to be at least 50%, half windows. Under the proposed changes, they would only have to be 40% of the front as windows. Now let's talk about the institutional zone. And the only place this exists in the South Ward is right around Beth Israel Hospital. Now, these were zones mostly set up to be hospitals, universities, very dedicated land uses. The proposed changes would allow all kinds of additional land uses in these areas, including 10-story or 120-foot tall apartment buildings, homeless shelters, hotels, boarding houses and rooming houses, animal-related uses, cigar and hookah bars, breweries, uh, body-piercing studios, dry cleaning, which can use some hazardous chemicals, and a number of other types of uses. Another zone worth mentioning is the park zones. Today, the only thing allowed in park zones is parks. Under the proposed ordinance, in addition to parks, you'd be able to have convenience stores, commercial gardening, as well as museums. Now we'll talk about the MX1 zones, which stands for Mixed Use Residential and Business Zones. The main place this appears is right here in Dayton, right there along Freeling Heisen Avenue. Today in these zones, a property owner is allowed to put up a three-family residence or a four-story apartment building. Under the proposed changes, property owners would be allowed to put up six-story and 72-foot tall apartment buildings. Property owners would also be allowed to have a whole new set of uses for their buildings in this MX1 zone. That includes rooming houses, boarding houses, homeless shelters, hotels, bars and lounges, cigar and hookah bars and lounges, uh, body piercing studios, light manufacturing, and a whole list of other newly permitted uses. In terms of design, if you are a property owner with 3,500 square feet, which is a 35 by 100 foot lot, today that property owner could put up six apartments on that lot. Under the proposed changes with that same land, the property owner could create 23 apartments, which would mean adding up to 17 more apartments in an existing building without a public notice or a public hearing. Property owners today can put up four-story buildings, under the proposed changes, they could put up six-story buildings. Today, property owners are required to have a backyard at least 25 feet deep. Under the proposed changes, 
if their lot is 70 foot deep overall, their backyard would only need to be 14 feet deep. Today, you can cover up to 80% of your land with a building. Under the proposed changes, a property owner could cover 90% of their land. Today, a property owner can pave up to 75% of their yard. Under the proposed changes, a property owner could pave 80% of their yard. And just like some of the other zones, the amount of windows you'd have to provide as a property owner on the front of your building decreases. There are some other zones that people in the South Ward might want to think about, which are right next door in the airport zone called EWRS and in the port zone. And you can see that there's a whole list of newly permitted uses in these zones, including electrical and gas switching facilities, including exterminators and pesticide businesses, and including a whole list of uses that service trucks. In addition, the proposed zoning changes remove the rules for 24 different types of uses that in the past have sometimes caused conflicts in neighborhoods. So this includes the smells and noises of an animal grooming or a daycare place, some of the fights that might break out around bars or taverns, some of the backing up of trucks or vehicles that might happen at an industrial truck wash. Many of the rules for all of these uses are either weekend or deleted. A couple other proposed changes worth mentioning are, for the first time, this proposed replacement zoning ordinance will, would allow what are called accessory dwelling units, or ADUs for short. And that just means an apartment in a garage or a backyard building. But changes would also require higher minimum fence heights, whereas today the highest you can put a fence in many places is four feet or five feet, uh, the proposed changes raise those fences to six feet. Finally, there's a number of changes that affect the process that the city uses to review proposed development and make residents aware of it. So many uses are changed to permitted uses that do not require variances, which would require the planning board to approve them, and the changes would allow staff approval rather than a public hearing for many types of development, like the construction of new three-family homes, the conversion of existing buildings to include additional apartments or different uses. I know that was a lot. So if you wanna learn more about this proposed zoning replacement ordinance or share your comments and suggestions with the city, you can visit this link right here www.linktr.ee slash Newark Zoning. The deadline for public comments on the city's proposed zoning law is Friday, June 16th at 5 p.m. You can send them to this email address and be sure to CC this Gmail so we all can keep track of the comments that go in. Thank you very much.